So welcome to my talk I'm giving here. It has quite a long title. Um, I'm kind of bad in finding a right title in the last minute when to submit, um, when to submit. So I'm not going to read that one out. Um, who was in the talk from um, Colin and Jonas about multi data center deployments? Okay, this is one of the implementations of it. It takes up some parts. Um, so you heard a lot of theory in this talk. This is, we're talking here a little bit more about how we are uh, tackling the approach. Um, in Collins and um, Daniel's talks, you heard a lot of PHP CO yelling. Um, now here maybe you don't see PHP CO, maybe here I'm old man yelling at clouds. I'm not the old man, but I'm, um, my name is Marcel Harry. I'm leading the architecture um, within um, Swisscom's application cloud and the Elastic Stack. Um, I'm also a member of Cloud Foundry's technical advisory board, and I'm working with Cloud Foundry for now more than three years. What is uh, Swisscom's application cloud? Um, Swisscom's application cloud has a public offering it's on developer.swisscom.com. We're one of um, the certified Cloud Foundry providers. You can go there, sign up, push your applications immediately, and see the way how we um, are provisioning Cloud Foundry and to, to our users. Um, as Swisscom, as a service provider, we're offering um, Cloud Foundry to numerous customers. We have some of them are powered by application cloud. Before, you just had a talk about how Dorma, Kaba leverages um, their microservices services architecture on top of um, our application cloud. We are also leveraging um, Cloud Foundry heavily internally for all our newer applications to be built. Um, Swisscom has a wide variety, a wide range of applications whether it's for supporting um, people on the field, um, in, in the stores, or even just internally. Um, and we have also a, a much uh, bigger project running on top of one of our virtual private instances. This is um, MyCloud. MyCloud is um, the Dropbox offering of um, Swisscom. It runs purely on top of our application cloud and off offers you cloud storage. Um, actually, anybody can go there and sign up and you get a bunch of gigabytes um, to store your stuff. Um, so all, all of these customers, they have customers as well. And what you usually expect as a customer with when using a, a cloud service is that cloud is always on. It's, it, the service is just there. It works. Um, no matter what might happen, but the important thing is um, whenever you want to use the service, if you have internet connectivity, it should work. Um, as a developer, if you look at it, and we have this very nice haiku, is as a developer, you just want to say, well, here's my source code, run it on the cloud for me, I don't care how. And this is where we, as, as a Cloud Foundry platform operator, are coming in, in, into the game. Our customers are um, the developers who are trusting us with their code. And, and all that we should do is we should provide a platform that keeps everybody asleep. So no outages, um, and it just works. So, but cloud do fails. I mean, there might be um, connections getting lost, there might be hardware failures, there might be <coughs> logical f um, failures within um, the infrastructure underneath, um, data centers might, might have problems, whatever. And also, since we're getting more and more customers and more and more applications, for example, um, also with our internal application cloud, we're seeing um, a bunch of requirements that are popping up, like 
business is actually requiring that um, the application that is being hosted, it runs within uh, multiple data centers. I mean, we're keeping up um, Cloud Foundry within um, um, highly available. We keep up your, your application, but there are certain maybe regulations or, or things that say, well, you just need to run within multiple data centers. And also, if you start getting more and more customers um, on top of a platform, and you might need to do maintenance on that platform, it finding a maintenance window that fits all of the customers, just forget about that. That's not something that will work out. And as a developer, you still want to stick with, with that user experience of, I just want to push to the cloud and just it's, it's your, you're the platform operator. You keep things up and running. I mean, I don't need to, um, I don't, I should not think about HA because I mean, I built my application already based on, 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 on the 12 factor manifesto. So why, I mean, my, my application is ready to horizontally scale, but also being highly available if you as a platform operator do it. And then if, if we, we're also running um, our infrastructure, then, then the infrastructure wants to keep things simple as possible and stupid. And, but you also need to lifecycle infrastructure. And this can be adding new hardware. This might be exchanging um, things that, failure, uh, that fail. And over time, you, you might also get bigger upgrades to leverage new functionality. And these bigger upgrades might not always um, work in an interruption-free manner. So, and then giving that we, we just can forget about finding, finding a maintenance window that fits all, and, the, rec and the, the feeling of the people, well, things should always be on. Um, we, we actually just need, what we want to have is that we can simply CF push into multiple data centers and the infrastructure underneath can life cycle without interrupting um, the services running on top. Um, so we, we then started thinking about, okay, we're, we're, this, this requirement um, is getting more and more important for us and, and um, how, how do we want to approach it? Um, one of the classical approaches so far is, okay, let's just make infrastructure highly available through, throughout multiple data centers, but we really would like to keep the infrastructure um, simple as possible and, and also stupid as possible. So we, we would really like to, for example, not stretch storage over multiple data centers. In the end, we would also like to be able to just tear down um, a whole stack or a data center without also having the possibility that it might lose. And the only thing that we actually need to do if the application was pushed into multiple data center, um, we just need to direct or shift traffic to the right endpoints. And given that we're a telecommunications company, network operator, it's kind of the things that we, we can easily do. We can easily Re, um, manage the traffic to the right endpoint. So um, there was recently an XKCD, it was I think the second last one. I'm not going to read the whole one. The funny thing is, okay, let's just burn down data centers in the end. There was also Colin talking on Monday um, saying, well, maybe if you're engineering for a thermonuclear war, you're maybe over-engineering. So let's just find some, somewhere the balance in between. And so we, we, we went off with that and um, we, we, we made a few um, important marks that we wanted um, to, to consider. So for us, the developer experience is really important. We would like to keep one push. So there are... At this summit now, a lot of people talked about multi-cloud, deploying to multiple um, um, clouds. 
folks have uh, presented tooling that supports you in pushing towards um, uh, multiple Cloud Foundry installations, uh, which then mimic kind of that way of, of, a, of a simple one CF push. We, we think we, we would like to, to, um, to keep with that without addressing uh, multiple uh, Cloud Foundries at once. One of the things, and this was also in Collins and, and Daniel's um, talk was um, the cap theorem. So this is certainly something um, we, we should keep in mind. Uh, people who were um, listening to, to uh, Collins talk, then you now have all the theoretical details and you know how cinema seats can get mi mixed up if you don't uh, adhere to the cap theorem. And another thing is certainly we, we also need to keep network traffic in mind. I mean, we're building a distribute, we're building on top of a distributed system that itself provides a platform for a microservice architecture. So network traffic is certainly something um, that happens a lot. And especially if it comes in, in um, together with, with uh, synchronizing state or keeping things efficient, latency is something um, we should really care of. The good thing is, as Swisscom, we have certain advantages um, with regards of that. I mean, we own and control our stacks, the data centers we run it, the networks, and also the pipes. Um, all these things are being pushed through, and everything is even in a, a metropolitan area, because, I mean, if you compare, um, Switzerland is that small that we don't need to talk about going from East Coast to West Coast, where we're certainly hit, hitting various physical limits of just being fast enough. So when we look at how we're deploying um, our application cloud or um, Cloud Foundry, then we basically, um, it more or less looks a little bit like that. So on the top, um, we have an access layer. So this is where traffic from other networks flow in to our stack. Um, this is also where, for example, we terminate um, SSL. This is the first thing where um, load balance, a, a first phase of load balancing hap is happening. And um, this is also the, the north-south bridge between um, the physical network and, and the virtualized network um, based on an SDN on top of, of, of an open stack. And then we, we have um, Cloud Foundry is, is, is quite a nice already built distributed system. So it, it has various ephemeral components or ho easily horizontal, um, horizontally scalable components like um, the Cloud Controller API or even the Diego cells themselves, I mean, they're usually just running off of ephemeral storage. Um, but as we also learned in, in other talks, Cloud Foundry is itself a stateful system, so it has certain states. And this is mainly being provided through um, console, etcd, and as well as the Cloud Controller database. And this one we're running on top of a Galera cluster that is already spanning over three nodes. And we have our persistent services. Persistent services is always the thing that gives you a little bit uh, a headache if, if you are starting to think about um, um, making things horizontally scalable. It's also the nice thing where Cloud Foundry says, well, 12-factor apps, we're, we're the platform for 12-factor apps, just consumes the services from, from outside, but we, as we're offering a platform to, to run applications, people are also asking for these services. But there, we're now moving more and more towards highly available deployments of enterprise-grade um, service offerings like MongoDB, enterprise, um, either sharded or partitioned, and, and uh, with replica sets, and or like mo um, also the Galera cluster, with, which is already um, highly available. And the other thing where Cloud Foundry stores its states is the blob store. And within Swisscom, we have uh, 
another platform that is offering S3 as a service already out based out of four locations. So we, we already have an object store that is highly available and geographically distributed. And then underneath you, you, you kind of like have the Bosch director and, and various supporting services, but all of them, they are not that important in case of um, in case of a failure, because they're, they're maybe here to manage, but maybe first you can resurrect them and then go on later, be because running the workload is not being driven by them. Another important thing is this, all, all these components within the orange box, they are heavily talking to each another. So usually you deploy it either into one or multiple networks, but more or less, they're, they're just, they must be routable uh, on layer three. So they should be able to communicate directly with each another. So when we, when we looked at that picture and then moved on, um, we said, okay, we're, we're going now to take this, this thing and going to span it over multiple data centers that are given our, um, the size of, of the country we offer the services in, um, that they are very close to each another and we're able to get very good A bandwidth and, and also B um, latency in between um, those data centers. So, so we can address various, so we, we can address various of, of the, the problems easily by just having that advantage of, of the infrastructure underneath. So this picture shows you now a little bit how conceptually, which are the important things that you need to stretch out. I wrote it um, at the bottom that this picture only shows it for two sites. If you know a little bit about quorum and things like that, you should al always go with three sites. But the third site is left out as, uh, left out as an exercise for, for people. Um, but basically, as I explained before, we have all these ephemeral, already horizontally scalable um, parts of, of Cloud Foundry. I mean, they, we can just deploy them. I mean, the, we, we just need to replicate them as well. And then the, 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 the most tricky thing is, is, um, is, is, is the CF state as well as the services itself. But there, we're already running them in highly available fashion within our stack. So, and, and given that our stacks are very close to each another, we're just going to span them amongst multiple stacks, which then means that we mainly also need to make the network within the orange box, we need it routable with the network um, on the other sides. So then the, the access layer, the, the one above, is the one where we make connections, um, where we span the internal connectivity between the different sites. And this is also where then we direct traffic to, to the various stacks. Um, this is, for example, the outside traffic, routing it to the right data center and the right stack. This is something that within Swisscom we're already doing for other projects. So this is a standardized um, service that, that we're able to set up and then we, we can just leverage um, the, the things underneath. And as I said before, DNS, NTP, this is like usually things that you can anyway just use locally. Um, if they are highly available within the stack, it's fine. If, if, a stack is fa if a stack is failing and another one is not depending on it, I mean, you don't need to, to span it. Anyway, so, but as you might see, um, we, we really think of keeping, for example, the stacks very in individual. So we don't want to stretch open stack over multiple sites, even uh, as a multi-region approach with Keystone. And, and then you suddenly have RabbitMQ also being stretched and, and Galera and, and then comes storage and network. And so there we just said, no, we just keep the stacks autonomous, so they can also fail um, on, a, 
on a per location site. And if we, if we look at that a little bit, then people would usually say, well, this is just an availability zone within uh, AWS. So usually um, people are deploying Cloud Foundry over multiple availability zones. And yes, it's, it's more or less that. And I will also pick that up later when, when, when um, to show you like for also other um, things we developed to be able to do that. If we're deploying and lifecycling Cloud Foundry, um, Bosch is, is the tool to do it. And so we said, well, are we now going to split up um, our Bosch manifests into two different Bosch manifests that we deploy to each um, stack on the other side? But then, like, okay, now we need to run updates simultaneously. We need to orchestrate that together. Well, let's build something like a meta Bosch. And then, uh, well, no, this just gets too complicated. <laughs> I mean, in the end, and this is what I mentioned before, um, Bosch is already aware of availability zones. And it, will, it is able to deploy into multiple availability zones. The only difference here, in our case, is, well, our availability zones are two do totally different um, stacks. So it's two different clouds. But yes, in the end, we're just deploying to multiple availability zones. And this is then where, where we looked at, OK, can we do that kind of deployment um, with a single Bosch, but deploying it against uh, multiple availability zones that are backed by different um, clouds. And this is where we started working together with the Bosch team on what is called um, the multi-CPI support for Bosch. Um, it means um, Bosch needs to talk to different clouds. It needs to upload the stem cells maybe twice. It needs to um, create resources based on, on their availability zone. And yeah, essentially, Ma we're mapping the various resources we're deploying with Bosch to different clouds over um, the availability zones. And then, I mean, within Bosch itself, Bosch already handles all the availability zone stuff. So it will just handle the deployment as we know and we do on, on other single clouds, but multiple availability zone setups. Given that we, like one Bosch is able to, to reach all the, um, the components on all the different clouds because we interconnect them with a direct layer free link. The current status of that, um, it's ready to be merged. We're, we're, we're discussing um, like the, the, the last uh, cleanup things. There's a branch up within our GitHub repository of Bosch. Um, this is the thing that is currently running in, in our premises. It's not yet officially merged, but it's heavily discussed with the Bosch team. I mean, also, they already had some plans for that. So it's not something where we had the idea and, and, and now we're just proposing it. So it was really something we developed together with, with the Bosch team. Um, it's as we this week, as we discuss, it's still, um, or as we present here, it's, it's being discussed with them. It will hopefully be merged um, at some time. And then you also need some changes um, to the CPIs. So um, the CPIs need to be now know a little bit more, but we were able to do that with backward uh, compatible changes. So the thing we did as we're um, talking directly to open, uh, only to OpenStack is we implemented it with the OpenStack CPI. And um, so we're showing it how it will work with talking against multiple OpenStacks. But yeah, so once uh, people are implementing these necessary changes to also the other CPIs, you will be able to talk with one Bosch to, to OpenStack and AWS at the same time. So um, that's then, in my opinion, going to be the real like multi-cloud experience with 
when deploying things. Um, these URLs here are up for, for you to look, to look at, to, to, to give feedback. Um, also, certainly to, to tell people, well, well if, if you want to maybe try it out with your CPI, you need to adapt your CPI. There's the OpenStack CPI that, that shows what you need to change, like these changes. We will propose these changes to be merged once we have um, things merged within Bosch. Um, but for example, one, one of the nice things would be um, if the Bosch Warden CPI would be next. Because at the moment, if you're running um, errands with Bosch, Bosch spins up a VM. This might take some minutes. And then it runs a job for maybe 20 seconds. So if you could actually say, well, run all my errands in another availability zone, which is pointing to the Warden CPI, then all these errands, they could just run um, locally on, on the Bosch director or, or so with where or where Warden is running. Um, and it will, would be very quickly because it's just a matter of spawning a container and destroying it. So errands could become very fast to be executed. This are kind of like the, the, change, the changes underneath that, that we now did, that we're now, we're now rolling out things using that, and we're certainly sure that there still will be dragons. We, we, we don't think that this, this will just work, but it's something that we said, well, we're going this way around because we think um, um, this is the way how, how we want to stretch um, Cloud Foundry amongst uh, multiple data centers, um, but certainly in the cap theorem, we'll hit us sometime, will make us trouble, but we're certainly sure that um, we're finding solutions there. Also, one of the things that we see is we do not yet have intelligent traffic routing. Isolation segments might be something that come in the future, but at the moment we will still have lots of inter-TC traffic um, because uh, the Go router is not not availability zone aware. Also, services are not like intelligent in um, placeable like um, apps. Like you cannot say, well, be rather placed there or here because also app placements and things. This is things we, we want to figure out whether it makes sense or not. And then, yeah, certainly, um, I mean, we, we have some experience when Cloud Foundry parts of it go down within a single stack. Let's see how robust it will be when, um, when it's two totally or three different stacks. Yeah, this is um, certainly also one of the dragon we might encounter. But to, to end, we, we really think that we should really build the platforms for cloud native applications, um, cloud natives themselves, because this will make operating, running them as well as easy as cloud native applications. And with that, um, I'm at the end, and we're more or less right on time, so I don't know how much time we have for questions. If we do not have, but I think we're more or less done with all the talks, so questions, and otherwise, please um, catch me later. I'm still here till somewhere in, uh, later in the evening. Thanks a lot for listening. Any quick question? No? Okay. Yeah, yep. What do you think is the maximum distance you can put between the data centers without that the latency gets into your way? Do you have any idea? It really, I would say then it will really start depending on, on the services. For example, like how efficient will ETCD slash console still be with the Raft protocol? How efficient will Galera synchronization still be? And, and all these things, this really depends. Um, we we um, we know that we're able to build it way like to have the latency in between our data centers way below what what what, what should become a problem. But um, I know, for example, that people were building Galera clusters stretched over Europe, and Switzerland is still smaller than Europe. So <laughs> yeah, shouldn't be a problem. We'll see.
Okay. Thanks.